Okay, Nertov. So last night we started looking at this midrash, about the four kings, the four kings of Yehuda who went to war, all had very different ways of, of going to war, as we discussed. It begins with David Amelech, who says, David Amelech says, I will go and I will fight and I'll lead the army and we'll destroy the enemy. And all I'm asking for from Hashem is a bit of assistance in making the conditions right, asking for light at night so that he's able to go and he's able to chase, he's able to be victorious in war. Then comes King Asa, who says, Ein bikoach, to go and to, to kill. I can chase, but I can't kill, so I will go out into battle. But I'm asking you, Hashem, for, to fight half the war for me. And then comes King Yoshafat, who says, I don't have koach not to go out, not to kill, not to chase, not to go out to war. We will sing Shira, sing Shira, daven to Hashem, and you do the rest. And then comes Chizkiyahu Melech, says, I don't have koach, not for any of those. I'll stay in my bed. And I'll go to sleep. And Baruch Hu, you will, you'll, you'll do the rest. That's the Midrash. Those are the four kings. Each one with different modus operandi. Each one with a different request. And Hashem grants all their requests. Each one in that way was, was uh, miraculous. So the question is, what, what, what comes out? What do we learn from this Midrash? What is the difference between each of the four kings? So many look at this as a, as a way of looking at different levels, perhaps, of Bitachon and Ishtad Lut, how much effort one should put in versus how much one should rely on Hashem. And there are different ways that you could read it. There are Mepharshim who say that it goes from the, maybe from the lowest level to the greatest level in, in terms of Chizkiyahu Melech just asking for a miracle and he doesn't have to do anything. Somebody said to me last night after, uh, after the share, and this is the way of Desla reads it, I think, as well. He says that you could see it the opposite way in a certain sense in that the one who is doing the most, that's not necessarily a griota, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But the Pasuk tells us, right? Pasuk in, in Parshat Ekev, the Torah warns us that a person shouldn't, we shouldn't become a haughty and don't say, But if a person recognizes that it's not just but that Hashem is helping, so then I can do that and it won't, uh, I won't fall into the trap of thinking it's just me and it's not him. So David Amelech was able to go, was able to fight and able to put the effort in. And at the same time, realize and not forget that Hashem is uh, behind it all. And uh, in that way, so that, that, that's one way of, of reading and understanding as well. I wanted to suggest that all of this is, is, is one way of understanding the Midrash, but without really going into the Psukim and the context of what took place, each of these stories and each of these wars, I think that gives us a, another level of understanding as well in terms of what's going on here. So we don't have time to go through everything, but just very briefly, if we look at the Psukim, which the Midrash references us to in each of these four cases and see what the, uh, what the battle was and, and what was going on. It can help understand a little bit more as to why each of these kings asked for, for what they asked for. So the first one is David Amelech. And the story is told in the end of Sefer, the middle of Sefer Shmuel, the end of Sefer Shmuel Aleph. But, uh, and the, the Psukim tell us that David and his people came to Tziklag, again, I mentioned yesterday, read some of the stories in the Tanakh, you know, with the background of what's, what's happening today, it's almost as if, you know, this was written for uh, today, we see it in a very different light. But it says, So they come to the city of Tziklag, uh, which has been attacked by the uh, Amalekim, and the whole city has been burnt down. They came and they took captive all the women and the children from the city were, were, were taken hostage. David and his people, they come to the city. It's been burnt. Their wives, their children have been taken captive. So we see the first thing they do, they, they cry. They cry until they can't cry anymore based on what they've seen and what's, what, what has happened. The wives of David and Melech have been taken captive as well. And uh, so in that situation, you see, when we go back into the Tanakh, the, uh, David and Melech had an advantage that we don't have nowadays because he could ask God what he should do. He went and he asked the Arun him, what's the uh, proper course of action? 
Nachimelech Hagish Anali Hayefod. Interesting how many of these words in modern Hebrew have a different uh, a connotation, but he says, bring the effort relating to the Urim Vatumim. And then it says, Vaishal David Bashem. So David Amelech asks Hashem what he should do. Lemo Eldof Achle Agdud Aze Ha Asigen. That's where the Pasuk in Tilim, that's where it comes from. Eldof Oivai Vasigen. Chase after them and I will pursue them. So that he, he asks, is that what he should do? But Yom Elo, the answer he gets is, Ludof Ki Asik Tasig Batzel Tatsig. He says, you will go, you should chase, you will save. And that's what happens. And the Psukim go through, tells how he goes with 600 men, 400 men. They go and they uh, rescue all the captives. They, they defeat their enemy. And that is uh, pretty straightforward. That, that is the story of with David Amelech. It gets a little bit later on. The Pasuk, which was quoted by the, uh, the Pasuk that was quoted by the Midrash, where it says, David That's so they chased after them and smite them from the from the night until the ne until the next uh, night le machorotam as the midrash explained that means two day two nights and the day in between and that was david amenach's prayer that hashem should light up the sky for him so he's able to continue and be successful in the battle so that is that is one story that is the war which uh, david amenach fought and as we saw he asked hashem for help in terms of fighting the war but he did and he was and he was successful the next case was Hamelech Asa. So these stories are told also. The, the, the Midrash points us to Sefer Divrei Ayamim, other places as well. But in Sefer, Sefer Divrei Ayamim, we have the story about uh, Asa. So Asa, which uh, begins telling us Asa was a very righteous king. And at the beginning, it was a very, uh, it was a peaceful, peaceful time. But um, and in those years, it says, There was no milchama. But then things change. So then things change. And we see that uh, the, the army of Asa as follows. It says, So we had an army from the from, uh, Yehuda of 300,000 people. From Benjamin, another 280,000. So nearly 600,000 people, which is, a, which is a large and considerable army. However, So we have 600,000, but the, op the opposing uh, uh, army, the enemy has got double that. I don't know exactly how, how many it is, but it seems to be double. They're vastly outnumbered. 300 uh, chariots, again, the word Merkava, which is one of the words for one of the uh, uh, tanks in modern Hebrew. So they go out and fight. They go out to fight. And then Asa calls out to Hashem. Hashem, Very interesting uh, phrase the Tanakh uses here. He says to Hashem, you, Einimcha, is an interesting that we'll see that phrase comes and repeats again. It makes no difference to you. Somebody who is a mighty army, somebody who has nothing. For you, it, it makes no difference. You can help. Help us. We rely on you. We call out in your name. And then it says they are they are victorious. But the Pasuk makes, makes clear that they go off Hashem. It's, it's Hashem who fights the war for them, so to speak. And, and then there is as well the Pasuk which we quoted yesterday in the Midrash. It says, Again, that the opposing army was broken before, before Hashem and before his camp. That word, Machanehu, it uh, could be ambiguous, but again, it's not Asa directly. But it's as opposed to the previous story, David Amelech, where it was him directly here, there is more help from Hashem. And it's obvious and it's clear why we need more help and it's more miraculous, because you're completely outnumbered. Because there's double the, the opposing army that's come to fight against us and, and we have nothing. So he's there. He's in there. He's in the war. He's in the situation. He recognizes that he doesn't have the Koach to do what David Amelech did. And so he prays to Hashem and he says to you, he says, It makes no difference to you. I am the one who is in Koach. But help us, and Hashem helps, and he is he is victorious. That is more or less. Again, there's a lot more that we could say, and a lot more we could go into, but uh, just very briefly. The next story is 
a few, a few prakim later, with the story of Yoshafat and the battle which he fought. No, so the, the, the question is, once, once, once he's there and once he's in the situation, uh, what, what to do? Meaning, there, there they were already in the war. The war had started. They were in the battle. There was no, there was no question. You, you, you're there. You're going to fight back. But yeah. David Amele asked the question, was, should we go out and, uh, and, and initiate? Yeah, it's been initiated. You're there. You're in the situation of war. So we asked Hashem to help. And Hashem, uh, and, and, and Hashem provides in that way. Okay. Um, the next yeah. the next one with, with your Shafat is like this. This, again, goes back to the uh, what we saw Maybe an element of this in that parak of Tehilim of Pei Gimel. See all the enemies coming along, coming together, surrounding from all sides. It's very interesting. What came out, in, what we emphasized in that parak was that all these different enemies and these different nations, which have really nothing in common. The one thing they have in common is their hatred of us or their hatred of Hashem's people in the world and what he stands for. That is what brought them together. It seems to be, yeah, that was also their downfall. Um, so it says, All these nations came together uh, against Yoshafat to war. There's a large uh, mass of, of, of people, this army that's come against you. And again, yeah, the situation if the previous situation was you had an army and you had a strong army but you were just outnumbered two to one over here you're completely surrounded on all sides all the enemies are coming together um and the the the, the tanakh tells us how they how they daven and how your shafat uh, davens to hashem it's interesting he says that same word and we saw by sao he says turns to hashem he says Einimcha. he says the same thing over here it says, you have you are ruler over everything ruler over everyone you have all the abilities again to you it makes no difference it's no it's no trouble for you to come and to stand uh, and to stand with us and to help us um etc and it goes on and we see that the people sing as uh, as it says in the midrash and when they do that is when the uh, that is when the the battle ends, and the enemies miraculously all uh, they're all surrounding them, but they all die. They all see. It seems to be that they that they all actually kill each other. That's what that's what seems to happen. It doesn't say it completely explicitly, but Rashi points out. Uh, <coughs> There it is. Um, at the time they started to sing and to pray, Normally that word means one to help another. Yeah, it says, but the to destroy. And Rashi points out over there, he says, Azru Ishbu'eu, Hesivana Kalosh Baruchu Zel Zel Ashkitam, Ad Kalotam, Ad Shinaflo Agrim, Laolet Zen Pleta. Meaning these nations, they couldn't hold it together long enough to fight against us. They fought against each other and, uh, and, they, uh, and they all died. And that was, that was the end of that. Shafat and the people were saved. But again, here there was no army, here there was no Melchama, but because they were completely surrounded, completely besieged, and there was, and there was nothing they could do. Finally, the last one. Which uh, we won't read inside, but the from the story of Chizkiyahu Melech. It's a famous story because it appears in the Gemara as well. But this is where uh, Melech Ashur, San Cheriv, and this was the superpower of the day. Ashur, and we know that uh, San Cheriv went and conquered most of the world, and he went and he would destroy nations, he would exile them from one place to another and scatter. And the entire Assyrian army is out and is encamped outside on the walls. And in the very next chapter, the Tanakh talks about the discussion that Chizkiyahu Amelech had with Yeshayahu, where he was, he was uh, on his deathbed. He recovered from it miraculously, but at the time he thought he wouldn't. And the Gemara and Brachot has a discussion in terms of exactly what, what the Navi said to him. He told him, because you haven't uh, you haven't engaged in that mitzvah, you have no life, you're going to die in this world, in the next world. Same discussion. But the point is, Chizkiyahu Amelech is literally lying on his deathbed he's lying in bed how can you go out and fight how can you go and lead an army if you're 
lying on your deathbed. You can't. And he can't get up. He can't fight. He can't pray. He can't do anything. He asks uh, Hashem for a miracle. And that, is, and, and that is what happens. Point is, what we see maybe from all of these, you know, you can look at the Midrash and the opening line of the Midrash was Masha Tavaze lo Tavaze. In other words, you had these four kings. What one asked for was not what the other one asked for. Not necessarily as a value judgment, but as a just understand, we look at each one in their situation and look at where they are. What we said at the beginning, that idea of Hashem uh, wanatein chakoach lasot chayim. Hashem gives us koach lasot chayim. Each one at the level where they are and in the context of where they are and what and what they can achieve. David Melech is the king of a, he has an army, he's able to go out and fight, so he knows what he has to do, he can do what seems, what makes sense, and he asks Hashem, that which is beyond, that's Hashem, that's where I'm asking you to come and step in. Each one of these kings, essentially, is in a different situation, but he's saying the same thing, which is, I am where I am, I'm going to put in the effort, I'm going to put in the maximum effort of what is required, of what isn't within our capabilities, and beyond that, Hashem, we ask for your, we ask for your assistance as well. And that is, we look at, uh, at where we are and throughout, throughout history, there have been times where that, that effort that we had was to sit and pray and wait, and there was nothing we can do. There are times when that effort is that we have an army that we're able to fight, that we're able to support in whatever ways we're able to, but always to put in our effort to reach our maximum level. And beyond that, that is where we ask, and that is what we uh, ask for divine assistance from Hashem, and hopefully will provide it for us as He provided for the four kings. Mm -hmm.